Uh, well, first of all, I just want to you know tip my hat to Georgia Southern and uh, and, and Coach Hennon and. And that team, man, they're, they're really, really good, playing really well right now. And, uh, you know, that was a hard fight, a hard fought game, and uh, much respect for them. Um, extremely proud of our guys, man, just uh, the resiliency they've shown over and over again. Um, they don't, I guess they don't look at the scoreboard, they just play the game. And, um, and it, it was going to take an army today on the mound, and special things happening, and big moments. And I thought, you know, so many of them delivered. And, uh, you know, the message was just, you know, we got we got to, you know, win 27 outs. It doesn't matter what the scoreboard says, and I thought the guys really bought into it. And a very special, you know, biggest thing, uh, really, I wanted that moment for the players more than anything, and, and the program, obviously, but to see these guys out there celebrating dogpiling meant the world. Questions? Um, Oz, uh, in any way, maybe this game kind of seemed like your season, you know, you struggled early on, midway, you start to figure things out and seem to somehow be peaking at the right time despite it you know, being a first year, a team that lost a lot of production, not to mention you lose Will Armistead. Uh, and that seemed like that was going to be the turning point in all the wrong ways. Well, yeah, and honestly, uh, that was kind of the moment where it turned in the right way. And um, not for the reason of an injury by any means, but uh, guys stepping up, you know, whether it's on the mound or, or whatever. And it's also, also the time of the season that I, I felt like and that this group really took ownership, you know, and said, you know, it's, it's up to us, it's up to the players to go out there and uh, take care of business, lead each other and so forth. And uh, our job then was just to direct them a little bit more and, uh, and just kind of get out of their way. So um, it was, you know, it's, it's been a, a pleasure watching these guys grow. And I know I say that a lot, but that, that's that's the best way I can describe it. I'm kind of bounce off that. I mean, considering the, the history this program has with coaches, this is the most successful first season for a head coach. Do you kind of surprise yourself maybe a little? Uh, no, I'm, you know, I'm always going to bet on myself, you know, and, and stuff. But it wasn't me. It's, it's these guys. It's our staff. It's, it's the, our administration. It's our fans. It's the, it's the program. And uh, the culture is so strong because it's been built by such great coaches before, co great players before, and, and the tradition. And uh, that's a real thing. And uh, so our job, and just like you know, we talk to the players about when you, when you put these pinstripes on, it's like putting on a superhero's cape. You, you got a responsibility to go out there and represent all those before us, and and we do as well as coaches. And uh, so. Uh, just, just very thankful, you know, very thankful, very humbled and, and blessed. And, uh, you know, we're just uh, excited we get to keep playing. Dalton gave both junior college transfers, if y'all can both answer this, just, you know, winning the Sun Belt Championships. I'm sure it's part of the reason why you came here. Just kind of tell me that feeling. And I'm also wondering if this was maybe the most entertaining game y'all played in your lives. Uh, you know, this whole experience, the whole tournament has been like out of this world, honestly. Uh, it's, and, you know, we both, both of us played in the same regionals. Uh, same type of tournaments uh, playing Juco ball, but it doesn't compare to this. Um, you know, every team here is just fighting for a chance to play tomorrow. Uh, so everybody's bringing their best stuff. You know, you're seeing everybody's best pitchers. Uh, you're getting the best at bats out of everybody. And uh, I think it showed just how, you know, uh, convicted we are to get the job done this week. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Uh, we won some Juco championships and they were special too, but something about this one was just incredible. I mean, you got all those fans cheering behind you and it was just I mean this place was erupting it was just one of the best feelings I've ever been a part of and just along with these group of guys just sticking it out I mean we we're behind most of the game just being able to come back and just stay together and finish the game and come out with a victory is just it's huge something special coach is this a, a win that separates a good team from a great team uh I mean you know what I think it's a great team um, I think this is a great team. I think they, they've proven that their, their resume, what they've done this point, you know, uh, kind of shows that. Uh, but we're, we, you know, we don't, we're not going to excel. We're not going to, we're not satisfied by any means. We want to win the next game. And, uh, you know, that's kind of been the approach all year. And, uh, and these guys really bought into it and stayed level. You know, Coach Barry, something I heard for seven years from him was, you know, stay in the middle of the ring. And uh, I think this game kind of epitomizes that. I think, you know, uh, you get up, you get down, whatever, but you stay close enough to always be able to strike and, and stuff. And these guys have done a great job of that. We've got a question from our Zoom audience. All right, question from Heath Hinton. Gabe, you've had a big hit after big hit in the second part of the season. What changed for you or what did you do to make adjustments? Uh, I think it was more of a mindset thing. I think uh, beginning of the year, I was just, I was mentally weak and um, I was struggling a lot. 
And I think as the season went on, I uh, talked with coaches and players and uh, I just kind of found my identity and was trying to just clear my head and just know that I'm a good enough player to be where I am today. And uh, I think these fans helped me and all my teammates just kind of getting, like staying behind me and always picking me up. I think it's really helped me out along this uh, journey. As you, you know, utilized a lot of players in this game, or particularly pitchers who had already thrown a lot of pitches this week, you know, Billy, Nico, Kobe Allen, or, you know, even Carson Pato just coming off the bench for the, the first time all week. I mean, what, how did you just kind of approach the balance of, you know, going in for the win, but also, you know, trying to stay fresh now that you got an NCAA tournament? Maybe? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard. It's a hard game to coach a little bit when, when you feel that we wanted to win. We wanted to, we, it meant a lot to this program. Um, and our fans for us to, to win this. So we're going to do everything we could to do that and without compromising uh, any of our players, especially our pitchers and stuff. So, you know, for Nico and Billy to bounce back, you know, it was, uh, they were fine. If they told me and our relationships, you know, good enough to where I know they would tell me. And, uh, but they felt like, coach, I'm good to go on. So that was kind of the plan. And Colby Allen, man, he's just an animal. He, he's a competitor and, uh, you know, he, he wants the ball always. And, uh, you know, you don't ever want to overdo him, but, uh, you know, he was our best chance to win this thing on the backside of it, and he got it done. So balancing it out is never easy. It's, you don't know if you're always making the right decisions, but uh, you got to kind of have a little bit of a plan and trust it, and uh, and, and for the most part, it worked today. Kobe Allen went from being a guy who barely saw time on the mound last year to being probably your go-to, um, especially in two of the biggest moments of the season so far. We talk about how he's just grown, um, what you've seen from him on the field and off the field maybe? Well, he's got the it factor. He's got an edge about him. Um, he, he's a fierce competitor. He believes in himself. He's a strike thrower. Uh, his stuff has gotten better. You know, um, I think he's maturing. I think his fastball's grown, gotten more action, a little more velocity. The slider's uh, gotten more velocity, more action as well. So when you uh, add those things, the physical part with the mentality part, you, you, have, you have guys that, do, that can do what we've seen and stuff, and I think the biggest asset of that is, is his mentality and uh, his confidence, and, uh, and, and he's a great young man, too. Dalton, um, go ahead. Okay, I was gonna say for the players, kind of the same thing. When you put that five spot up in the night, what is it like having a guy like Colby Allen on the mound to close it down? Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, so after we put up the five spot, I went up to Colby, and uh, you know, he's, he's great. You know, he wants to win uh, all the time. But I just went up to him, and I told him, just be yourself, you're good enough. Uh, by yourself, don't try to overdo it. Um, and it's just so good to have him out there. He's so focused. Uh, you never see him like just looking around or distracted or anything. It's like he gets the ball, he's right back on the mound, he's ready to get to the next pitch. Um, he's lights out, you know, he's a great player. Uh, you always feel confident playing the field behind him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I knew once he got on the mound again that he was going to be him. and. I knew I was gonna get a ground ball and I was trying to give the fans a heart attack like I did last night. And uh, I just knew, I mean, Colby, he's a competitor. He's gonna give it all he's got. And uh, I just feel 100% comfortable with him on the mound. Yeah, for you guys, you guys were due up in that top of the ninth. What was kind of the vibe heading to the dugout knowing you had to respond? Um, a game like this, you know, so many things has happened. I mean, there are so many big innings. Uh, we were just trying to stay like even kill, you know. Um, you don't want to get too like amped up where you're going up there trying to do too much, but uh, you know you just always want to keep that energy up. Uh, you know we know that our offense, what our offense is capable of, we've shown it multiple times, and uh, we know if we take that lead, we got a great chance with a uh, Kobe Allen on the mound. Yeah, coach, I feel like when Ray Luke had that at bat, got the double, really just kind of told a different story going for going forward late. What was kind of your feeling on that? Why send him up there that moment? Well, we thought it was the right move, you know, to, to put that bat in there. Uh, it, it called for uh, that lefty, you know, going up there. And Braden's got a good bat, man. I mean, I know he hasn't had a ton of op opportunities, but uh, that's a big moment. And uh, for him to stay, I think there was two strikes. And uh, for him to stay on that ball and drive it, you know, in the, in the gap in left center it was, was momentum. And, you know, every swing, every hit, every run mattered, you know, and, and so forth. So it was uh, – Great to see that, and, uh, and even that ninth inning, I think back to Tucker Stockman, you know, with two strikes, uh, you know, and he gets an all-speed pitch. He doesn't try to do too much, gets a base hit to left field, and that really started it. And uh, so 
there were so many, you know, so many heroes, you know, in this game, and uh, they all they all had a part of it. So it's also you know two conference championships and just two seasons in the Sun Belt. I, I can't think of other teams who have done that when they're new to a conference. Um, when you wear that badge, what kind of comes with that, and how how special is it to accomplish that? Man, it, it means the world to us. It, uh, to take hardware back home with you, um, you know, it's special. Um, and this program's grown accustomed to that, and I don't say that arrogantly by any means. It's been a ton of hard work for many, many, many years, you know, to get to that point, and uh, for us to be able to continue that, uh, it means everything. Challenge guys all year, and they would, t they would tell you this, you know, we point back to that tradition of excellence and tell them they haven't earned anything yet, but they have a chance to put a number up there or, or numbers. And uh, but they got to go do it, and uh, for us to be able to, we accomplished that today. And uh, uh, but hope there's more ahead, and uh, we're gonna look, we're gonna enjoy this, you know, tonight, tomorrow, and then we'll get ready for the next one, wherever that is. We got a question for our Zoom audience, right. Coach. When you had the pitching injuries, you challenged your bullpen. Can you speak of what Best, Ock, Allen, and Middleton have done in response to that challenge? Well, they certainly answered it. Um, I, I think they have, they have certainly, uh, you know said, you know, give me the ball and I'll do my job and do my part. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, no hits or no runs and stuff, just going out there and competing and being consistent. I think that's what's changed. I think we became, we've gotten to where we're being more consistent with what we're getting out of the guys when they get out there. And that's, that's what it's all about as a, you know, as a pitching coach, that's, I'm telling, I just want consistent. I want to know what I'm going to get. And uh, these guys have been doing that. Coach, do you feel like you've done enough to pitch the host in NCAA mm -hmm. regional? Uh, you know, that's not for me to decide. You know, I sure would love to hope so, think so, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, whatever the outcome is, uh, you know, uh, after tomorrow, we'll, we'll be ready for it. Of course, we'd love it to be in Hattiesburg, but if it's not, you know, we know our fans are going to come and support us wherever we go.